Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we'll be talking about property 5. This property here tells us that if the order of kernel of phi is n, then phi is an n to 1 mapping from the set from the group G on to the group phi of G. Right? So we had been uh, considering that this phi is taking G to phi of G. Right? This is the homomorphism and for this homomorphism we can define the kernel of this homomorphism as containing all those elements from the group G such that phi of x is the identity here in phi of G. Right? This was the definition. Now we are saying we have n such elements which satisfies this condition. Then this mapping is many to one mapping. So it is n to in particular n to one mapping from g on to phi of g. Correct. So we wanted to prove this thing. Now for you to understand for, first of all let's see what is n to one mapping. Any mapping f from x to y suppose this is our x this is our y and we have some mapping defined from here to here by the function f. Now this function here is a n to 1 mapping if and only if for all y in y right for all y here suppose we have one y there are exactly n different x present in uh, capital x such that f of x is equals to y what does it mean for this particular element here we have n elements in x right then we take another element here in y for this also we have n such elements present in x and we'll be doing this for all the elements of y then this is the n to 1 mapping and in other words you can write uh, that the order of f inverse of the singleton set y because for you, if for any element y present in capital y set if you take its uh, uh, inverse image right the pre image of this they there there are how many such images they are uh, there are exactly n such images so its order is n right this is the definition now using this definition we have to prove that this mapping is n to 1 how we will be proving this thing let's have a look we know uh, for a homomorphism, uh, homomorphic uh, function takes the identity of the group to the identity, right? So phi of E is E dash, where we are taking E as the identity of G and E dash to be the identity of phi of G. It could be the same as E or it could be different also, right? So, uh, and moreover, you know, in the previous uh, property, right? This property, uh, which one? not this not this some other property i guess okay so i'll tell you which property is there we have uh, phi inverse e dash okay this was from the uh, homomorphism of uh, different elements how they behave uh, under homomorphism right so the previous properties that we were discussing uh, it is the last property in there so uh, here we are saying phi inverse of e dash that is this set x belongs to g such that phi of x is equals to e dash as i have told you above and from the previous property it is equals to the coset if we have some g dash here i have written it over here right this was a property that phi inverse of g if if you have phi of g is equal to g dash then phi inverse g dash is equals to phi be, x belongs to g such that phi of x is equals to g dash and it is equal to this coset right so using the same thing here with uh, g dash is equals to e dash and e is equals to uh, g is equals to e right why this is so because you know in homomorphism we have this property that phi of e is equals to e dash correct so using this thing here now what is the coset uh, where we are taking the element as identity element it is just the subgroup which is kernel phi in this case and we are given the order of this kernel phi is n hence the order of this e kernel phi is also n hence the order of phi inverse e dash is also n hence we have proved it for one element for the identity element there are exactly n elements present in g right but for our image here phi of g we have proved it for e dash we have other elements as well present as well here right so we wanted to prove that each of these element maps exactly to n such elements correct so this is what we wanted to prove in order to prove that we consider some element g which is some arbitrary element of the group g capital g such that phi of small g is equals to g dash 
then phi inverse g dash is equal to what it contains all the elements x such that phi of x is equals to g dash where uh, this set is further equal to this coset right as per the rule okay now so in order to prove our result in order to prove it for all the elements in order to prove it for n to 1 mapping we wanted to prove that the order of this element is also n and how can we establish that by showing that the order of this coset is also n and in fact the order of this coset is exactly equal to n why because you know all the cosets of any subgroup they have the same number of elements present within it if you remember we have studied about this group z9 under the operation of addition modulo 9 here we considered the subgroup 0 3 and 6 and we look at, uh, we saw at the left cosets uh, uh, which are constructed from all the elements of g taking this subgroup they were 0 plus h 1 plus h 2 plus h 3 plus h up to uh, how many 8 plus h right so you see we had three subgroups equal to h three subgroups equal to this subgroup right and three of them equals to this so you see in each of them we have three three elements present so the number of elements is the same in each coset hence if you have if you know the kernel phi which is the uh, trivial coset it contains n elements within it then another coset g kernel phi would also contain the same number of course uh, elements within it and this is by the above definition is equal to phi inverse g dash correct so this is what uh, we wanted to prove here now we have proved that it is true for all the elements present here that uh, their pre images are exactly n in number hence the given mapping phi right is a n to 1 mapping whenever the order of kernel phi is n so i hope you understood this property well well that is it for this video thank you for watching